Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build a 16-bit ALU in Quartus. So first up, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have your block schematic going. Under a new project, I just have example 16-bit here. You're going to be working with these chips mostly. It has 4A inputs, 4B inputs, a C input, a mode, and 4S inputs. So, what M does, pretty much, selects either logic or arithmetic functions that you will be performing by using S, which are your selectors. Basically, if you count the combinations, there's two modes, and there's four different combinations for S. Well, there's four different bits for S, which results in 16 different combinations. So for the ALU, you want to make sure that you have four outputs as well that go to your bus. So I'm going to show you guys the completed sketch to show you how everything should be connected. Here I'll go into one of my previous projects. And there you go. So in here, you'll find that you have five inputs. These five inputs are CN, M, 8, 15 down to 0, B, 15 down to 0, and S, 3 down to 0. You want to make sure the selectors are in each of the chips, except for the 74182 chip, which will be up here. Connecting these would be a very long and tedious process. Usually takes about an hour, hour and a half to do. However, for the sake of time, we're just gonna make sure we're just gonna show you the schematic in here, just so you guys understand what's going on. So obviously, you guys also have ground ground inputs as well, and P inputs. These make sure that it can. These make sure that. What goes from this ALU goes to the next one, which is why it's called a carry generator. So for your CN, obviously you want to make sure that it's connected to the first chip, and you want it connected to the 74182 so it can carry to the next chip. For A15 down to 0, you're going to want to make sure that everything is from least significant to most significant. So A0 through A3 will be on this ship. A4 through A7 will be on this ship. A8 through A11 will be on this ship. A12 through A15 on this ship. And so on with B and F. F is pretty much going to be your output. A and B are what what variables you put in. You want S to be in each and every single one of these chips. And you want to make sure that the bits are correct as well. However, I didn't do this pretty well the last time I did it. You'll want to make sure that S0 goes to the S0 of this one, and this one, and the other one. Once you get all those connected, you can worry about your M and your C CNs. Your M is going to make is going to be connected to all four of the 74181 chips to make sure that the correct mode is selected. CN obviously, as stated before, 74181 and the 74182. There's nothing going to be coming out from the AE Q, or the CN outputs of these ships. The G and the P are going to be going to the 74182 chips to make sure that, they, that the carry generator can function correctly. Once you have everything all connected, you can, also, you can finally start to run the sim. 
you want to also make sure that you have a C out output here, which is basically your carry out. Once you have all of that done, go ahead and take your project. I'm just going to go ahead and copy it into the file I was using before. And you're going to want to make sure that you compile it. Do you want to save your changes? Yes. What do I want to save it as? I'll save it as example 16 bit. And now it'll start to compile your design. And if you reference the table in the book, which I will quickly pull up right now. Give me one moment. The table should be ch found in Chapter 8 which talks about the arithmetic logic units. Excuse me, chapter 7. At least it should be. I have not... Here we are. Should be on page 293 of your digital devices book. As you can see here, we have compiled the design successfully. So next, what you're going to want to do is create a waveform file. Go ahead and insert your inputs and outputs, node finder, list. All you want to make sure is the input groups are selected. And make sure you're able to count seven, which you are. Once you have your waveform set up, what you're going to want to do is you want to compare your answers to make sure that they're correct. So by using page number 293 in the book, you'll see that when M is high and when S3 through 0 is equal to 0, then F should equal A naught. So go ahead and test it, and you'll get three feet three five D eight. Next, you're gonna knot the entire the answer of A or with B. So go ahead and clear that out. C A twenty seven. You're gonna or that with B. which I have F899. And I get FABF. And if I not that, I get 0540, which is the answer I want. For the next one, it'll be F equals A naught times B. So let's go ahead and not A. And it's, it's not A and B, not times B. My apologies. And then I have F899. And I get three, 3098, which is correct. The next function would be f equals 0. And as you can see here, f equals 0. The following function would be 
A and B, and then just knot them. So we'll go CA27 again. I'm going to end that with F899. And then just invert it. You get 37FE. So obviously, it's performing functions based upon that table in your book. And, you, and it can go on forever, pretty much. Like, you can do this for as long as you want, and you'll get the same answers as what you, you would expect. So as you can see here, the ALU works. It's fully functional. If you were to do this the same way as I did it, you'll be sure to have it up and working pretty easily. Thank you for watching, and make sure that you subscribe to your professor, and I will see you guys in another video. Thank you.